Thank you. Well, my retirement was coming, and I needed something that was going to represent a change in my life. So Kate said, You should just walk away. <laughs> but not in the sense of turning your back on your job and career of 38 and a half years at the center you started, but rather to represent turning the page and beginning a new adventure. But I wasn't thinking really about a big adventure or a crazy adventure. I was merely suggesting that you walk the 20 miles from the center to our home. Well, Mike liked that idea, and he said, well, why don't I just walk to Duluth? Well, that's 50 miles. I said that. No, oh, okay. But then it gets kind of fuzzy, and we do disagree about who said, <laughs> why don't we just walk around the lake? Because I never would have said that. <laughs> but once it was spoken, I thought, yeah, what would it be like to walk all the way around Lake Superior, staying as close to the shores as possible? We had the next three years to let that idea grow and percolate in our minds, and we realized during that time that there were more possibilities than just our own personal adventure. In particular, we could bring attention to the very important issue of fresh water, especially after we learned that 10% of all the surface fresh water in the world is found in that lake. Think about that, 10%. We also knew we'd be leaving a legacy for our children and our grandchildren and maybe inspiring others to do some crazy personal adventure of their own. And we knew our aging bodies would be challenged by this journey, but we also knew we'd be seeing the lake and the shoreline as nobody else had. Well, our learning began on day one on Wisconsin Point. Kate was taking sand out of her shoe and discovered the only blister that we would have on the entire trip. And while we were, she was doing this, she looked down to the shore and there was a gull that was acting kind of funny right next to the waves. Then suddenly it was pulled into the waves and it was tumbling over and over, couldn't right itself. I grabbed a branch and went out and I pulled it back into shore and Kate, along with a man who had chosen to walk with us that afternoon, removed the treble hooks and set the gull free. Well, after this, we looked around and we found a number of stick baits that had been lost by fishermen, not intentional litter, but something that had been left behind. And yet these and that gull would serve as a reminder, as symbol, if you will, of what we would see of human interactions every day as we walked around Lake Superior over and over and over again. The Wisconsin shore had very little beach, but a lot of red clay banks, as you can see in this picture. And so we were often forced to walk up and over these banks, and I always sent Mike first. But uh, this particular day I went up, and as I planted my hiking pole, both it and the land beneath me began to sink. And I did a little pirouette, fell backwards, and slid all the way down to the water's edge, collecting that thick red clay in the process on the back of my brand new backpack and purple jacket. It was a very unhappy moment. <laughs> well, there were also numerous streams on the Wisconsin shore that we had to cross, 18 in one day. And these were just the beginning of the hundreds of streams that we would cross or have to find our way around. Streams that drain the small watershed that feeds into Lake Superior. The watershed is only 49,300 square miles compared to the lake, which is 39,700 miles. That's a very small ratio. Think about the Mississippi River, and it's 1,250 square miles that has a 1,200,000 square mile watershed. Right now, fortunately, the water in Lake Superior is restricted to just those communities within the watershed. But the Great Lakes are frequently mentioned for our source of water for other places, and that concerns us. While we walked the Wisconsin shoreline, we passed the Apostle Islands, where we had been married 24 years earlier on a sailboat. And then we came to the reservation of the Red Cliff Band of uh, Ojibwe, and as we walked through there, we learned about the mysterious 1,450 barrels that had been dumped in their bay between 1959 and 1962. The official word from the Army is that they are safe. 
After Ashland, we came to the Bad River Indian Reservation, and there we got into a boat with our conservation officer going down the Bad River, and we learned about an iron mine that was proposed and the potential for pollution to get into that Bad River, which is critical to their fisheries and wild rice production. The conservation officer dropped us off on the other side of the Bad River, and it appeared to be a pristine beach with just eagles and and uh, deer as companions, but we almost immediately came upon this balloon that said, Happy Mother's Day. Now, we, when we began the journey, we figured we'd probably encounter plastic and other litter, but we had no idea that it, almost every single day, even on the remotest beaches in Canada, we'd encounter balloons. Mylar, latex, inflated, deflated. As we moved into the upper peninsula of Michigan, we began to hear about proposed sulfite mines and people who were organizing to question both the practices and the safety of such mines. But fortunately for us, the shores of Michigan were primarily pristine sand beaches, and it seemed like it would be easy walking. But for day after day, for hundreds of miles, I found my hips and my knees were quite sore. We had not anticipated that each step would put one foot higher than the other. And by the halfway mark in Sault Ste. Marie, I was beginning to wonder out loud if I could make it, to which Kate said, Don't say that, Mike. <laughs> so I never said it again. <laughs> well, we had to make it to the Sioux by the last Saturday in June because that's the only day of the year that they close the International Bridge for people to walk across it. And we had started this walk in Duluth, crossing the St. Louis River where it enters Lake Superior. And now at the halfway mark, we were crossing the St. Mary's River where it exits the lake. We saw ore ships going in and out there, just as we do in Duluth and Superior. But so far, there are no oil tankers. And that possibility, along with the already, already existing pipelines, causes us to worry some about that vast reservoir of clean, clear, fresh water. In Canada, we walked on the ancient, pristine, gorgeous Canadian Shield rocks, and we explored some very remote locations. Sometimes, however, we were forced to walk on railroad grades where we had to handle the ties or on roads. One day while we were walking on the railroad grade, some ATVs roared up to us, and they came up and they said, what are you doing here? which was not the way we were usually greeted by the cabin owners that we met along the way. Instead, they felt like they were really suspicious of us. Then it tur turns out we found they were working for a gold prospector. Maybe they thought we were there to be claim jumpers. I don't know. <laughs> but it made us think about what was going on here in Minnesota, about the polymet mine that is proposed, another sulfite mine that we're told will take 500 years of monitoring after the mine closes. Well, that sounds almost impossible. Then we heard about the mining accident in Colorado and the pollution of the Animas River, and we knew that it was impossible. Our concern for these pristine border waters is complicated. Because Lake Superior is so large, as you can see, Many people think it's too big to be harmed by a mining accident, a ship disaster, or a pipeline spill, but it can be harmed. It is so deep that we're not even sure if all the bottom waters mix with the top waters. Maybe it is, still has some of the waters that, from the melting glacier of thousands of years ago. It takes a long time for water from the St. Louis River to make it out to the St. Mary's River. The retention rate of water coming into the lake is 191 years, and that's just the surface water. Well, we interviewed people in all three states and Canada. We were doing this as a part of a research project for a number of universities. And we wanted to learn from them what their knowledge was and attitudes were about the lake. But the size of the lake does isolate communities and people. In fact, the population around that entire lake only totals less than three quarters of a million. 
And both the relatively small populations and its great size are assets to keeping the lake wild. But they're also a problem. Our political strength is small and divided between two countries and three states. Our return then to Minnesota was our victory lap. It felt like we had so much confidence and satisfaction from these wonderful four and a half months. We walked around the cliffs that outline the Minnesota shore, down the roads, on the state park and Lake Superior hiking trails to Duluth. 145 days, 1,555 miles from our start, and we were joined by a large group of people who had followed us on radio and newspaper and the web, and they were there to celebrate. Well, we still marvel as we think back on this adventure that we drank water right out of the lake when we were on that rugged Canadian shore. There aren't many places in the world where you can still do that. We've been talking a lot about the problems and the threats to the lake, and, and we do have to remain vigilant. But I think it's very important that we emphasize that overall the lake is still very healthy. And we talk about resilience. We know nature is very resilient, if left to its own devices. And even if it's damaged, we can bring it back to health. For ourselves, resilience was important each day because we would walk 10, 12, 15 miles and then have to get up and do it the next day. And it actually wasn't as hard as it sounds because we knew, every morning we knew we'd be seeing something new and beautiful. And so we never got up and said, I can't do this anymore, or what were we thinking? <laughs> We know that our goal for protecting this water for our grandchildren and future generations is not complete. We all need to be connected, we need to be informed, and we need the people of the lake to find a way to share communications. Plus, they must have the support of the rest of the continent to protect this magnificent body of water that we call Superior. We didn't walk this lake to find problems, we walked this lake to be inspired, and we were, and we need to recognize all people's rights to clean water. It's not a commodity, it is an essential. And we challenge you to act on these values and concerns if we're going to have pure, clean, fresh water for our future. Thank you. <laughs>